Hey there everyone, Hitesh here back again with another video and uh, welcome to another video where we are going to read some article, we'll try to grasp as much as knowledge as possible from it. It will be helpful for you if you are trying to move into the production and trying to take things into the production and uh, it will be super fun. Now this particular video is not that much fun for the company because uh, we're going to be discussing about an outage and the outage where one line says that we accidentally deleted the production table. Yes, it sounds like an intern mistake, but uh, the fact is that I have also seen my fair share of such incidents and they are not always intern mistake. A lot of senior devs even make mistakes of having these outages due to some mistake that they didn't saw it or there was some edge cases around it. And uh, the most important part is it happens with everyone. There is no need of dunking on anybody for this one. It happens with literally every single company if they are onto some scale. So there is no need to look down at them. It's all about how they actually reacted to the situation and how we can learn from their mistakes and can move forward. That's the whole thing we can do about it. So let's go ahead and read an article. This is really, really interesting and I'm pretty sure this is going to be one of those valuable video where you enjoy. So if you, if you found such videos valuable, go ahead, hit that in the comment section and I'm looking forward for 200 comments as a common target for this video. So let's go ahead and read this article and what this is all about. Let me share the screen. So this is an incident report of February 21st, uh, 2024. And if you can, in case you don't know about the recent, recent is a really nice company uh, which provides you email. And the most important part is they provide email for developers. And yes, I totally agree at this point that a lot of you might be saying, hey, uh, why would I use recent? I pro I'm pretty happy with uh, SES, Amazon email service. So uh, there is a there is a lot of debate around it and yes you are totally okay you feel free to use your own uh, AWS emails but the point is that a lot of services are just a wrapper uh, which does little more than AWS a little bit developer experience they provide Vercel is one such example and I think recent is lying somewhat in that category but the whole idea is they provide developer experience so developer actually like to use them so uh, they are fairly new to the market but we recently tried to use them it was a good experience so anyways uh, this is the detailed post-mortem of the outage and uh, by the way one more thing if you're looking forward to learn system design or anything like that, no, I'm not gonna be pitching up any course after this line. Uh, but what I'm trying to say is, if you're trying to learn any system design or how to build real production world apps, these are the articles you should be reading up and they are far more valuable to you. So let's go ahead and read this together. So again, detailed postmortem of the outage of February 21st. So probably this date they are gonna be writing down in some, hey, this is my nightmare date. So let's go ahead and read about this. This is really fairly an interesting one. So on February 21st, 24, recent experience an outage that affects all users due to a database migration that went wrong. <laughs> uh, not a new story. Uh, what happens is a lot of time there are database migrations that happens in the company. Reasons could be many. Sometimes they want to just restructure the database entirely, add new tables and new data that they want to capture. Or maybe sometimes it's just a regular upgrade to the data. There is some version upgrade or something like that. This one seems like they wanted to add some more fields in the database or may maybe want to normalize it further, whatever the case is. But this looks like that way. This prevented users from using the API, including sending emails. That's the one job that you do, folks. That's the one job that you do. Uh, and accessing the dashboard from 501 to 1705 UTC. This is really long and they, they, are not, they are not shying away from it. It's almost about a 12 hour outage. And in the production, 12 hour means a lot. I still remember that uh, we used to run one startup where we have around 350,000 users. And any outage for more than 20 minutes, uh, there were a lot of emails around it. There were a lot of messages around it. So an email service, which is really the core functionality, a lot of people sign up onto the service, probably they are using recent. They want to verify their user, send an OTP onto the user, log in emails. And if they are mission critical emails, uh, like the OTPs for some transaction services, oh, 12 hours is a long time. So let's see what happened uh, in their uh, arena of the battle. The database migration accidentally deleted the data from production servers. I think there is no big line uh, that can actually picture the scenario here. You have accidentally deleted the data from the production. Ah oh, man, this is a nightmare, true nightmare. 
we immediately begin the restoration process from a backup. So, <clears throat> in case you don't know, uh, these days, whatever the service they are using for any cloud provider, there is a point-in-time recovery that is made available by, by these cloud providers. Yes, of course, this is expensive, but exactly for this reason, you actually opt in for the services of point-in-time recovery. So you can recover your data exactly at a point you think that, hey, all the things were great at this point. Yes, this takes time sometimes, but it's a really great fall safe. Everybody, almost everybody provides and offer these services, little expensive, but you save yourself from this day, uh, which completed six hours later. So I'm not sure that why it did took six hours to uh, actually restore your data. Probably there is a little bit more issue involved in that, but uh, six hours is a little long time. Unfortunately, once it finished, we found out that it failed to restore the data. Oh, <laughs> after six hours. So we had to start the restoration process second times with a different backup. Uh, it happens. Uh, probably what they're trying to figure out at this point is, see, in these kinds of company, and I'm pretty sure this is the case for recent, there is no blame game. There is no, let, let's uh, let's set the fire on this person's head. There, there's no like that. They all try to come together and try to figure out, uh, you know what, uh, we made a mistake. Okay, let's figure out how we can uh, prevent these mistakes later on. First, the first goal is let's restore the service. So they probably judged it wrong that, hey, at this point, the backup should do the job. Uh, usually it doesn't happen. Usually everybody takes a little bit extra backup behind the time. But hey, this happens. This happens. Restoration process for the second time with a different backup. <clears throat> and during this time, no API request were being accepted and no data being restored. Oh, this, this is a common scenario. Whenever you are doing such kind of a thing, restore, there is no way you can accept the data. Um, Pretty common. <laughs> uh, for data created prior to the migration, there were five minutes of data loss from when the migration started and the database went offline from this time. We are currently working on repopulating the data from this five minute window. Uh, I don't think so they will be able to do it. I'll look forward if they update that how they were able to do it because uh, during this time you're taking the migration uh, on the data so nobody is able to uh, do the request or do the job at that time. So there is no way you can recover that data as far as I know. But uh, recovering that, repopulating that data, like there were no requests registered in your database. So how you are going to recover that? Anyways, uh, the sincere apology for the impact and the inconvenience caused by this outage, we place immense importance on reliability. Uh, you already do uh, because the fun fact here is that you have came forward and openly accepted the mistake and made everybody available to this, I think good job. But this week we fell short on our commitment uh, to you all. It's clear that we have a long way to go in becoming an industry leading infrastructure provider. But in learning uh, from this incident, we will improve our operations and tooling to avoid outage like this in the future, whatever the cause. I would love to know more about the cause and what are the mitigation process that you are uh, you are incorporating in your workflow that is provide avoiding these things in the future i would be much more comfortable in using your service if that thing is also being uh, posted on a blog or something like that but hey anyways you're doing already a good job okay uh, here's the timeline uh, the database migration started uh, notice tables being dropped from the production i would love to see if you have a, a cam face or something being opened at this point like uh, this is like a big f movement what the f is happening uh, begin restoring from a database backup uh, posted on the status page updating every 30 to 60 minutes until resolution good job uh, first restoration process completed Realize the first backup failed and started to investigate. Uh, this is usually when your all calls are on, because there is usually an app in these big companies where some of the folks are on call. By the way, there are dedicated apps for this special feature. So in case you don't know about that, I'll probably talk about that in some another video. So this might be ringing uh, late at the night, all these things. Find that the backup failed due to wrong selection of the backup timestamp. Told you earlier, this is exactly what happened. Increase the compute speed up to the restoration process. Update the database memory from 128 to 256. So they are trying their best that uh, let's put as much money as we can in buying more compute services so that this outage goes away. I think this shows a good sign. I'm happy with this one. Begin restoring the database from an older backup. Uh, second restoration process complete. API begin receive request. Dashboard were accessible again. Incident was resolved. So what happened? Yeah, this is this is I would love to see. 
while building a feature, we performed a database migration command locally. Okay, everybody does that. But it incorrectly pointed to the production environment, which dropped all tables in production. Oh, that that is interesting. Uh, like, how did you point it to the production environment? Usually, production environments are a little bit more on that. And even accidentally, if there is a code which drops the table, there are a lot of checks uh, on the production tables. And I think this is more of, you need a new DevOps guy. <laughs> Not new, but... <laughs> You, you need a little bit more engineering on the DevOps side. This is fun. And uh, I think that's why a lot of people discuss about the environment variables, like how to protect them and all of these environment variables. Because developers deal up with a lot of environment variables. And still to this date, we are actually working with the environment files, .env. Not a good way. I think we need a better software and solution. There are some companies working on that, but so far not, nobody has impressed me. The first attempt to restore the database took six hours but failed due to wrong selection of the backup. Yeah, yeah we, I saw that. Five hours and we have studied that. Okay, so I would love to know more about... So one of your engineers had the access to production environment. Pretty common. Everybody has the access to the production environment. But he was able to accidentally do this. Hmm, that sounds wrong. <laughs> Lots of alarms. Impact, we already saw that. Next steps to improvement. Oh, I would love to see that. Repopulate data from the five-minute window of data loss. How you will do this? I would love to know this. Uh, no accessible user roles should have right privileges on the production database. Ooh, that's that's good one. You didn't implement it this so far. Uh, no accessible user roles should have written privileges on production database. Everybody has usually the read access. Only a few special people have the write access. But anyways, we all learn like that. Improve local development to reduce the risk related to the database migration. Uh, by the way, in case you don't know, there, is, there are a lot of companies who actually makes a really good buck in this exact line, local development to reduce uh, risk. And in case you don't know, one of the features which GitHub provides where you actually spin up these machines, these are designed exactly for this. There's also a service known as Git Pods. This is exactly designed for this, that local environment is set up like a flash, Plus, nobody actually does this kind of a thing. So that's also a different market where you can actually work with that. Uh, create redundancy to preserve sending function even during the database outage. Ooh, that's interesting. You are, you are going pro now. Uh, increase the cadence for the disaster recovery test and uh, implement incident banner on recent dashboard to inform users quickly. Hmm, this one is nice because a lot of time people might not have the time to go at the bottom, see the status, outage page. But this one is good especially for these kinds of cases. Uh, to our customer, we are deeply sorry. Uh, this is the disaster control message. Uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, that that's all about it. Uh, so yes, there are a lot of learnings from this one. Uh, first of all, it can happen with everyone. Instead of blaming each other, focus should be on, uh, let's fix this as quickly as possible. Uh, the good thing is that they were able to recover the things on uh, in point of time. So having a database backup is always a good idea. And on top of this, uh, some of the things uh, really need to, so you need to now really work on your development environment uh, and especially the read-write permissions, somebody needs to evaluate them and especially the focus now will be on how we can make our developer environment much more better so that these things doesn't happen. But anyways, it happens with everyone. No need to worry too much about. Uh, folks at Raysend, I would just like to, to mention to you, you're doing a pretty good job. Uh, coming forward with this blog was really a big and bold idea. I wish you best of luck. You are doing pretty good. This is how industry works. Don't need to be worried about it. That's all. I hope this video was uh, insightful for you for some real world of how things actually work in the production, how things actually happen. No need to panic. Everybody makes mistakes. And if you have enjoyed this video, please do share it with everyone so that people can understand how the things works at production. That's it for this video. And let's catch up in the next one.